that was impressive. Oh, well, thank you for, for coming out. It's great to be back here at the State Fair. We have a number of candidates, elected officials, who are, are here with us. Uh, as, uh, as one of you just pointed out, this isn't our first time at the State Fair of this campaign. We got in April 8th of 2021. Here we are, home stretch, a couple of months left before the November 8th election. Uh, and what a, a great way to be on the trail to uh, be here at the State Fair. Uh, we're joined by a, a number of candidates. Uh, as far as the statewide ticket goes, I'm running with Allison Esposito, our candidate for Lieutenant Governor. Uh, Paul Rodriguez is our candidate for New York State Comptroller is here. Michael Henry running for New York State Attorney General. Uh, our Congresswoman, Claudia Tenney, Congressman uh, to be. Brandon Williams is here as well. Congratulations on a big primary win, Brandon. Uh, and another number of other candidates are running for uh, state legislature. Uh, I guess, you know, well, John Lamonti is running for New York State Assembly for, for re-election. Uh, Rebecca, how's the campaign going? It's going well, good. Uh, Re Rebecca is running for state senate. Uh, we have candidates running. We got a, we got our shirts. So this uh, <laughs> this is great. For, well, why don't you all introduce yourself as well? Because we got judge candidates and, and others here. Uh, Melinda McGonagall for Onondaga County Court. Uh, Jim Poro for Onondaga County Family Court. Uh, Jeff Cheyenne for Onondaga County Court. All right, that was a uh, quick and easier way of doing it. Uh, so uh, it's great to be with uh, with the whole team here. We're running as one team, one ticket all across this entire state. It is incredibly important to save our state. Uh, I was given this message, but it wasn't just directed at me, for so many others as well. Uh, a week ago yesterday, Governor Kathy Hochul was giving remarks. She declared that I was no longer a New Yorker. She uh, demanded that I get on a bus and head down to Florida. The next day, I took her advice a little bit. I did get in my car and I went to Florida, New York, I was endorsed by the mayor of Florida, New York, and we campaigned together there. But I'm born and raised New Yorker, lifelong New Yorker. I'm raising my family here. The only four years that I was away were four years that I was spending on active duty in the United States Army. Uh, when you want to be the governor, you need to be the governor for all New Yorkers, not just people who vote for you, but also people who don't vote for you. Uh, Kathy Hochul is the governor. I'm running against Kathy Hochul. I'm not here demanding that she leave the state. I'm not declaring that she's no longer a New Yorker. It's ridiculous. And uh, she said that the reason why she was targeting me was because of what I believe in, which means that the millions of other New Yorkers who are out there who believe in what I believe in, are, are they supposed to leave the state as well? Uh, I would call on this governor over the course of these next two months in this home stretch. Let's debate our ideas. Let's debate our vision for the future of our state. That's what these elections are supposed to be about. Uh, it can get heated towards the end of a campaign. Uh, I've accepted the first two debate requests that came in. One came in from CBS. The other one came in from PIX11. I know PIX11 has a number of partners across the entire state. I accepted those requests. Uh, Kathy Hochul has not yet accepted any of these debate requests. Uh, I challenge her to have at least five debates. We should have at least two down in New York City. We should have in that media market, at least one in the Capital Region media market, at least one out in the Buffalo or Rochester media market, and I think we should have at least one here. There are a number of media markets uh, through the rest of the state. I'm happy to debate her everywhere, in every media market. Here's the key, we need to have these debates before the start of absentee voting, before the start of early voting. It's time for Kathy Hochul to give up her wish that I get on a bus and leave to Florida. I'm not going anywhere and it's time to debate. Let's make this a campaign of ideas and issues. New Yorkers are hitting their breaking point right now in the state and fleeing. So I also challenge Kathy Hochul to finish this sentence. New York leads the entire nation in population loss because. Now we all know how to finish that sentence. New Yorkers feel like their wallets, their safety, their freedom, the quality of their kids' education are all under attack. They're hitting their breaking point and going. Lastly, I'll tell you this. Yesterday morning, I was in Brooklyn. And I was endorsed by a group with a long history. I mean, they say that they are a lifelong Democrat. They've always voted Democrat in their life, but they're voting for me. They're voting for us this year. The number one issue cited, crime. It's important to them. It's important to New Yorkers. They want to feel safe in this country. Uh, any questions to the media, happy to answer, but uh, thrilled that you all are here. And thank you to a great ticket for stepping up and running.
You know, the, the national headlines are constantly flooded with, with Donald Trump developments, whether it's um, the search warrant, the opening the search warrant, all, the, all those things. How do you keep Republicans focused on what you're doing? How do you juxtapose what ha you know, the, the conflict that Trump brings to, to the Republican Party with people that also support him and you need to support you? Well, I actually think the consequences of their raid is, in many respects, backfired. Uh, there are a lot of people who are more enthusiastic about coming out and voting Republican because it just doesn't pass a smell test how it went down. Uh, and you, when you even see people like Andrew Yang and Andrew Cuomo and others putting out statements and saying they don't, they didn't support Donald Trump, but, and then they share their concerns with how it went. You can bet that there are a whole lot of other people who uh, voted. There were many millions of New Yorkers who had voted for, for President Trump and they're not happy. So there's an enthusiasm gap already in favor of people who plan on voting Republican. There's even more of an enthusiasm gap now. Uh, you saw it play out with the Attorney General. He comes in front of the cameras, he gives remarks quickly, and then he leaves. He says he can't answer any questions. I'm here right now. Let's just say that I told all of you that I can't answer any questions that you have to say about absolutely anything. Now immediately you'd start thinking of all the questions I absolutely could answer. Now if you're the Attorney General and there's a case, what you could say is, it's possible that you might ask a question I'll be unable to answer. And then you open it up for questions. But the way that this went down and you just walked away and said you're not willing to answer any questions, uh, I think that there's a big enthusiasm gap right now in 2022 that's only grown even wider because of how they've handled this raid. For people who do find the raid, neat, you know, legitimate, but, but aren't sure who to support in the governor's race, how, how do you, you know, qualify your support or relationship with Donald Trump, the fundraiser you're doing with him, with New Yorkers who are, you know, not happy with I, how he governed? I talk to New Yorkers about the issues that matter most to them. And what I hear across this state is that they're concerned about rising crime. They are concerned about rising cost of living. They care about upward economic mobility. Uh, I believe that we should repeal Castle's bail and give judges discretion to weigh dangerousness and flight risk and past criminal record and seriousness of the offense on far more offenses. Kathy Hochul says there isn't enough data. You have to elect her to find out what she stands for and what she proposes maybe next year. I say that we should remove district attorneys who refuse to enforce the law like the Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. Kathy Hochul says he just got there, cut him some slack, he's doing his job. I was out there saying drop the murder charge on Jose Alba and she was saying she's not going to get involved, it's a local matter. People who are concerned about these issues right now see clear as day contrast. We are out there talking to voters about the issues that matter most to them and at top of the list, crime and the economy. So that's what they want us talking about. That's what we're talking about. You mentioned crime. Uh, the, one of the things um, under the bail reform laws was addressing smaller offenses like marijuana use, people getting arrested for possession and such. And we had a state fair in which there are designated smoking areas in which you can you know, smoke marijuana. But you know, just on my own travels around the fairgrounds, I've observed and, and smelled the aroma in, in the air. Um, how do you feel about that legalization of not only marijuana in New York, but having a statewide event like this? Should people be able to do that and mix it with alcohol? First off, something to, to understand, as I'm here answering questions, there are a number of candidates. We all have our own positions. We're not monolithic. We all are entitled to our own beliefs. We're running, you know, we run for different races, different offices. So I'm just going to share my opinion. If I'm bringing my little kids, to the fair, I should have an ability to bring my kids to this fair without them being exposed to other people smoking marijuana. That's my personal opinion. Uh, my daughter's turned 16 uh, in just less than a month. They're starting uh, 11th grade this Thursday. Uh, for me, I believe that I should have the ability to come enjoy this fair without them being exposed to marijuana. And by the way, I, I feel like they, I should be able to bring them to New York City and have them walk streets without them having to observe people who are doing crack on the streets. Uh, and, you know, now they have legal injection sites and they want to make that statewide. You want to get a cannabis license and they're getting first of line access to people with a drug conviction. This is so backwards.
right now, the way that we're seeing this government handling these issues, but that's my personal opinion as far as this state fair. You mentioned you also want to be a governor who represents all of New York. Can you give us a sense of what your connection is to central New York and how you might be uh, very visible and present? There's been uh, a history prior to Governor Hochul uh, with Governor Cuomo uh, focusing not only downstate but, but regionally and here in central New York. Well, I'll tell you why this uh, and how this is so important to me. When I announced on April 8, 2021, in this state of 62 counties and all the regions throughout the state, I came right here to Onondaga County. We're at the Palace Theater for our first campaign event. And I've been here dozens of times during this campaign, and I'll keep coming back over and over and over again. Uh, and I will lean on these state legislators from this area to make sure that they have all the support that they need from Albany, whether it's in the budget, it's laws that are getting passed so that they can represent their constituents. Unfortunately, what happens in this state of 62 counties, it kind of feels like it's 58 counties against four counties. By the way, not even Staten Island, which is part of New York City, but those four other counties, they have a lot of power up in Albany. By the way, everyone who lives in those four counties deserve to have a voice and representation in our state capital, but not at the expense of everyone else everywhere else. We want all New Yorkers, regardless of whether you're in a red county or a blue county, or purple, whether you are Republican, Democrat, Independent, every New Yorker should feel like they have a voice and representation in our state capital. I will keep coming back to Onondaga County over and over and over again because I believe that the most important thing if you want to earn someone's support is to show up. And the most important thing if you want to earn keeping their support is to keep showing up over and over and over again. And I want these state legislators to be able to go back to their constituents and tell them about all, by the way, it doesn't matter whether you're a state senator who's a Republican or a Democrat, we all, all 213 legislators, they all have constituents, and that's why it's important that everyone has a seat at that table. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you.